All right, Shalom Rastafari. In this uh, series on uh, strategic spiritual relocation, we want to address a very important, a very interesting um, issue and everything, and it's the humanity of Jesus Christ. And, and I determined not to show a particular painting or picture, even though we have a lot of historical images that date back to the very early um, parts of even the first century and the early centuries and everything, and we've already done our own study on this. And I think a little bit more clarity um, is possible. If, if, if one are receptive to it, hopefully they can receive it. Um, why does the race of Jesus matter? Right? Why does what race or what seed he is of matters? First of all, it matters because it is the truth. Right? The truth. The fact that Christ is, quote, black. Now, a lot of folks think, and even a lot of so-called Negroes and black folks think, that when we say that and bring forth historical proof to back that up, that means that, well, I'm black, I don't have to do nothing because Jesus is black, I'm black. Hey, you white folks going to hell. <laughs> ain't going to work like that. No, it, it ain't. For real. I think that um, I and I and I need to remind even especially our own people, although if we put that title out, a lot of other people are going to check it out and probably say this and say that. Oh, he's not black. Oh, he's a Palestinian, a, a Middle Eastern type. Per Those terminologies wasn't even used. Even the terminology of Semite, that wasn't even used. No. In fact, the oldest historical documentation that we have that points to the race of Yeshua, most likely is the Bible. But in addition to that, outside of the Bible, we have Tacitus, the Roman historian Tacitus. And what's so very interesting is that a lot of um, folks who study Roman history and everything, they will refer to these and those, Josephus. Josephus talks about how the how in 70 A.D. the Beit Israel or the Jews, the Judahites of Judea, how those who could get out, how they fled, right, and they went into Africa, right? They went into Egypt. That's where we get the Elephantine, the island connection with the Beit Israel, the Falashas or the Ethiopian Hebrews or Jews, and many went further south. We have Yoruba history, right? The Yorubas came out of Jerusalem, the Ebos. Are, are one type of Hebrews too. We have the Lemba people, all right? Um, of course, we have ourselves over here, but first we have to establish that so we can show the connection. It's like the Atlantic, Southern Atlantic Ocean. In the time of the trans so called Atlantic slave trade, it was called the Ethiopic Ocean. So think about that. How could that ocean be called the Ethiopic Ocean and we have Ethiopia on that side? You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is the facts. But it matters. Why does it matter that Yeshua, the Moshia Yeshua, is black? And does his true identity, his true humanity, does it exempt black people um, from doing anything than just saying Jesus is black? No, it does not exempt them. You understand? And, and I think this is why, you understand, this is why our lost sheep will suffer so much. And if they don't hear and receive the word of truth, they're going to suffer even more. All right? Um, remember, it's not any work that we do to gain salvation, but it's by his grace, right? We are saved by grace and through, through faith. Saved by grace through faith. And it's not of ourselves. So the fact that Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, that he is what we would call today a black man, does not exempt us as black people or as black men. In fact, it puts more of a um, responsibility on us to live up to that spirituality. You understand? If we are Beta Israel, if we are Ethiopian Hebrews, and we identify positively, historically, accurately, document from with documentation that Yeshua HaMoshiach and the true Judeans or Judahites of the 70 A.D. period, the destruction of the temple, the Tisha B'Av, that they were black peoples, it means that there's more responsibility on us. Because to whom more is given, you know how it goes, more is required. 
see, it's easy for us as black folks or Negroes to say, okay, slavery, the slave trade. Look what he did in the slave trade and slavery. In a sense, from a learned biblical Ethiopian Hebrew perspective, that was good for us. In fact, a lot of what we see in this world going on today is black people's fault. Initially. Let's overstand that. And, and not just black people, but let's, let, 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 let's, uh, the rubber meet the road here. Let's uh, screech. Let's, let's create, uh, uh, burn the rubber right here. You understand? Let's burn the rubber at this point. Let's, let's spin out right here and recognize what our responsibility really, really is as black men, and specifically as black men. In fact, I was watching a video. You probably see this video out there. Not watching. I listened to a little bit of it, and then I had to go go ahead and talk about the black woman's agenda. The black woman's agenda is to kill God. Sounds like the Gannett to Aiden. Sounds like the Garden of Eden all over again, part two. Guess what? It is. It is. So does it matter what race Yeshua HaMoshiach is? Well, of course it does matter. Does it matter that he is black? Yes. Does that mean that every black man, woman, or child gets a pass? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because if the Son of God took on our sinful flesh, and we were the ones saying, crucify him, then history all makes sense. Then it makes absolute perfect sense. Now, those who are not of our race or of our people, of race means seed. Just let's get that out the way. Race means seed, like a seed, like like you could say sperm, like DNA, so to speak, right? And there's twelve men of fruit, right, on that particular tree. You know, what I'm saying just be a Jew or a Judahite is just one twelfth of that Jacob Israel equation, right? And and you know, folks say, oh, anti-Semitic, whatever. The, we we already broke that down. You know what I'm saying? You can't bring a modern-day phraseology and, and, and um, exempt the foundation. The foundation stands. But if the foundation be destroyed, right, right, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? So it matters because it's the truth. You see, Revelation, not Re well, Revelation says a lot, but Thessalonians says that... Um, uh, that it will send strong delusion on them to believe a lie. Some folks are still looking for the strong delusion to come. They don't recognize that humanity has been living in strong delusion for 400 plus years, e even, even for 2,000 years. But more so, the delusion has gotten stronger in the past 400 years. The delusion has gotten even stronger in the past 40 years. The delusion has gotten even stronger in the past four years. You see what I'm saying? So one will say, well, oh, we, uh, it doesn't matter what race he is. So for someone, listen, listen. And, 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 and I, I, I wish it was easy to say white folks because actually it's a lot of black folks who think nothing good can come from black people. Like, can anything good come from Nazareth? You remember that scene right there in John chapter 1? Right? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Why Nazareth? You understand? Because Nazareth was like a ghetto. Nazareth was like the projects. Nazareth was like the slums, the project where, 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 where the, the poor black Jewish trash was, so to speak. You understand? So some of the more middle class black Jews, right? The Boulez, you know, not the now, were saying, um, can anything good? Can anything good come from, from, that, from that wreckage over there? And yet we'll read in our Bible how God takes the small things, the refused things, the, the little things, the rejected things, and he raises it up. And that which thinks that they're raised up, what does he do? He brings them down. Isn't that what we're seeing in this very time? You know what I'm saying? In this shifting of the whole world order? I know. You'll say, it's the globalists who are using the race thing. But then the Bible says that God puts it in their minds and hearts to fulfill his word. You understand? To fulfill his word. The choice is whether we're going to receive the love of the truth. You understand? And follow the truth wherever it leads. Now, folks will say, um, it doesn't matter. But yet, they quite rightly accept 
artificial false pictures, counterfeit pictures from the Renaissance, Renaissance paintings, Renaissance pictures. And when they say Jesus, they look at that picture, they say Jesus, and we know why and who created that and what they whitewashed. But just because we find out underneath the whitewash there's blackness, that means to whom more is given, more is required. Remember, the law, Torah came by way of Moses, Musa, right? And remember Moses, in the story of Moses, he had his hand, he put it in his bosom, it came out, it came out um, um, leprous, white as snow, right? He put his hand in his bosom, it came out as his other flesh. We see the archaeology, we can see what the Egyptians were, you know, what they looked like. You understand? Even the Egyptians broke down the different racial groups and everything else like that. And we know that, that, that the Israelite sons did not recognize Joseph because Joseph, he didn't look like one of these other tribes that looked non-Egyptian. Obviously, he looked like a tribe. He looked like an Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? So, so let's, let's just get off of that. You know what I'm saying? We need to get off of that and accept him in spirit. See, spirit is the thing that a lot of Christians accept. Well, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Well, if we accept him for those things, then why don't we accept the truth of him? Unless there's a satanic, racist virus. You see what I'm saying? Now, there's the hate that hate produced. There's a lot of black folks who do recognize that Jesus is black. And they think it's just about that natural fact. You see, that's a natural fact. You understand? And they reject the spiritual fact. They reject the, the spirituality. They reject the repentance. They reject the change of mind. They reject the, the regeneration of the heart. Yovas, and this is one reason why, in spite of that knowledge of the natural fact, things just spiritually and otherwise get worse and worse. So, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth Right, came to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and what? Truth. You know, folks talk about falling from grace. That's interesting. Can we, um, as a Christian, or as one who accepts a Mashahawiyan, a Messiahite, one who accepts the Mushia, Yeshua, can we fall from grace? Does the Bible teach that? Absolutely. It absolutely teaches that. In fact, even when Parati uh, Aulos, Paul, he is ministering um, to, I think, uh, Imotewos, and he's talking about a novice. You understand how a novice gets puffed up, you understand, and falls and is able to come under the condemnation of the devil. Hebrews talks about, you know, Hebrews speaks a lot. You know, Hebrews talk about a whole lot, but, but there's a verse in Hebrews. I just want to bring it to you in a, in a, in a couple of minutes we have here because... You know, um, they false flagged us so much that, um, let's see, right there, okay. They false flagged us so much that we can only do like 15 minute, um, we can only do 15 minute uh, uh, spots, so to speak. But we're going to use that. Listen, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, follow peace with all men. Now, of course, that's difficult. People say, how can I? Because for a born-again, right, um, Christian or a born-again um, um, son or daughter of God in Yeshua, in the Moshiach, our peace is not our own peace. Our peace is Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus, is our peace. So we follow Yeshua with all men. That's the understanding of that. And holiness. He shows us how to be in the world but not of the world. You see what I'm saying? He shows us how to be in the world and not of the world and how to tolerate folks and folks who are worldly but still be the light of God in Christ, without which no man shall see the Lord. No man shall see Adonai. You see, we can see the Lord in everything that is of the Lord. When we see the signs and, 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 and the wonders that are according to his will, we recognize that's the Lord right there. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. It says, looking diligently, looking diligently, looking diligently, right? Lest, least, unless any man should fail of the grace. Wow. That means one can fail of that grace, that undeserved favor or merit that, that none of us 
uh, have done anything. We have not earned salvation. You understand? We have not earned salvation. That is the gift of God. That is the gift. But you have to unpack the gift, right, to see what's really in it, right? Least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Many be defiled. Why does a root of bitterness spring up in some of y'all when we say that Yeshua is black? 